Hey guys, it's Timmy, and this is the last prayer call for the evening, and I'm going to take the night off and go clean my house inside. Um, that's Friday the 25th, and this is the last word and message, and it's very important, so I'll make this as brief as possible. I always say that, and then it's 10 minutes later, right? So... <laughs> Uh, this is the word, right? I had a neighbor, and he's had his prayers answered. <clears throat> Very specifically had to do with a vehicle and a breakdown, and a lot of other things also. But in that process, there was patience taught, there was perseverance taught, there was uh, leaning on God rather than people, there was trusting in God rather than people, etc., etc. Now, I just want to share a couple messages, but... He sent me a text message, and I'm going to read it, and it very well applies to the things we've discussed in the prior prayers, the teachings, the messages that God has revealed to us, and the answered prayers He's answered us with. So I wanted to share his experience, and in that I think that there's a, there's a lesson to be learned, okay? So let's just get right into it. I've made the analogy before that I don't really care for the cliches, but... Um, you know, let go and let God is one of them. Well, it's really hard to do, but if it's God's will be done, sometimes we need to be okay with not getting a prayer answered, or we need to be okay with things not going proper or right, but look at the teachable moment, and even in our darkest hour or our deepest calamity, there's Jesus Christ with us at all times, if you're born again, and there's literally God's hand reached out for mercy, and there's no temptation that is not common to man that he does not give us a way out. But we have to see the forest from the trees, okay? So the other cliche is, um, let Jesus take the wheel. That's been one of my least favorites next to what would Jesus do. Although there's great wisdom in both. They've been commercialized and <clears throat> as a den of thieves, you know, those are tables I would like to flip over. But <clears throat> let's just learn the wisdom. Let, let whoever has ears to hear, hear this, okay? And I told him the exact same thing I just told you guys. And so, as he's broke down on the side of the road, he sends me this text message, okay? It says, let Jesus take the wheel. Just to make sure you're properly aligned. Now, to before we go any further, I will backtrack just a little bit, flashback, and say, when you understand that let Jesus take the wheel, that's great. You let him be in the driver's seat, now he's steering. Okay, and that's going to be more of an application to what he's speaking to. But to take that revelation one step further in wisdom, to realize, like in the Matrix, there is no spoon. Okay, if you realize that you are the wheel, when you let Jesus take the wheel, you let him inside you command your body in a holy possession. Because he possesses you when he redeems you. It's just not the same as the world would tell you. It's not an exorcist. It's not, you know, like the movies. It's literally, you remove your will and your want and your ego and your pride and your your um, your gender, even. I mean, men are the brides of Christ. That's a hard truth. If women are under submission to the leadership of their husbands, just like we are to our husband, and that our first love should be Jesus. And then it should be our husband or our wife, and then it should be our family and children and extended family. Right? But it should always be God and Jesus first, no matter what. And if, like, Job can lose all of his family, we should be able to do the same and have a joyful spirit while we do it. That's a hard truth. Now, getting back to the reality of the cliche, let Jesus take the wheel and be in the driver's seat, this is um, my neighbor talking here. He said, let Jesus take the wheel and just make sure you're properly aligned and in a caveat with his will. Or you might find your ass in a ditch. Now, ass is a cliche that it's a double entendre and it's a symbol, okay? We're here with the donkeys right now, which there's donkeys and mules and asses. So he knows, he actually lives fairly close to this house. So I just want to put that in there. It's not a curse. It's an actual double valued symbol. So make sure, and in cars, if your alignment's not aligned, you're, you'll steer to the left, steer to the right. Next time y'all are driving, let go of the wheel for just a second. More than likely, your car is going to pull to the right. Um, 
That's to make sure that if you fall asleep at the wheel, you'll go off the road instead of into oncoming traffic. Most people don't know that. But if your alignment's off, to get it fixed, it can be costly. And if you don't maintain your vehicle and you let it go on for a long time, say for instance, oil. If you don't put oil in your car, it will overheat, it will break your engine, period. And if you don't change your oil, then you're a fool. So you pay somebody else to do it or learn how to do it yourself. But if you have a car, you need to change your oil. Same with your body, same with your spirit. So I don't mean that in condemnation or anything, but just a little wisdom. Learn it, hear it. Now here's the ass coming up to us. Thinking about maybe wanting to get a little word over here. So let's just carry on, guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you're aligned properly with his will or you might find your ass in a ditch. And he literally was in a ditch at this point. A physical, literal ditch. And it says, a little biblical wisdom I gained while working on the truck. Now this is a guy who's a farmer and he's a very handy man. So listen to his wisdom because it's more than I've got on those regards. The cause was something prideful did in my own will. In parentheses, he says, I added a lift kit for looks. In Texas, big trucks and lifted kits, so you can go mudding and do really cool things off-road, that's, that's a normal thing. And if you got money, it's not a cheap thing to do. So, in his will, he's saying, he went and um, added a lift kit for looks, cosmetics. Do we, gain, do we value things based on the outward appearance? So he did, and paid a lot of money to get a lift kit. So he says he didn't properly get it aligned after he got the lift kit. The results over time are many unnecessary, worn, expensive parts. And if we will align ourselves with God every day, especially after we get out of alignment by following our own will, we won't get near as much worn out, nor find our ass in a ditch near as often. Now it's ironic, because I don't think that it was a ditch, but the mule or ass that I believe it was Balaam, or Balak. I think Balak was the prophet of false of Bel and Baal, which would equivocate to Marduk, which we've talked about recently here. The feminine version would be uh, Ishtar, which is where we get the word Easter from, which is supposedly this weekend, but Passover isn't anytime soon. Just to let a little wisdom droppage right there. Um, the, the, the mule saved the prophet's behind by going off of the road and so if it hadn't gone off the road he would have been smited by the angel and, and killed and the donkey or ass or mule or whatever you want to call it actually talks and when it speaks to him it's basically petitioning with them that I've done good and I've been your beast of burden and I've worked hard and now you're smiting me and I just spared you your life because the animals can see things we can't guys and that's why we need to pay attention in nature to the things around us. The plants, the animals, the trees, all of it. So when the mule went off alignment, it was a proper it was the proper thing to do. Here in your own will, it just won't. So I told him that that was really cool. I said that's an amazing revelation that was there all along because we talked about it. And I asked him, "Do you need help?" And he said, "Nah, I'll do it like Johnny Cash, one piece at a time." Okay? That's amazing revelation, and it's a really cool cool overlay and analog to learning your lesson, you know? Learn the lesson. He didn't cry. He didn't even want my help. I could have gone and helped him. He didn't want that. He wanted to take his lumps. Sometimes we got to be humble and take our licks, guys. Now, this is the last thing, and it's a little humor. The There's two donkeys. Here we've got two donkeys, right? Or mules, I'm not sure the difference really. One's part well, more horse and sterile and one's not, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really matter. One's the Jerusalem donkey, which has the cross on the back we talked about. The cross is the mark for their service, for carrying um, Jesus, or carrying Mary when she was carrying Jesus in her womb. And also Palm Sunday. This is a reference to the Palm Sunday. Now, I'm not necessarily 100% behind Palm Sunday, but the story in the Bible is cool regardless. And it fulfilled the prophecy of the Old Testament of first incarnation and first coming of Christ. Now here's the joke. The two donkeys are um, in Jerusalem. It's the day after Jesus rode into town. And the donkey is talking to the other one and he says, Wow, yesterday I was carrying Jesus and everybody paid attention to me and I got so famous and popular. And now it's only one day later and, and nobody even knows who I am. Nobody knows my name. 
And the donkey next to him said, without Jesus, you're nothing. And I agree with that 100%, guys. Without Jesus, we are nothing. And we will be nothing and we'll be cast into the lake of fire because the devil is created for him and his angels. And if you don't join the winning team in your life, and you will have ample opportunity. Let's take our hypotheticals and throw them aside and just say, everybody has the opportunity to reach out and receive the free gift and then to cash that check, so to speak. Okay? So, Father God, we just thank you for the humor that sometimes we can find on Facebook. But we also ask for your protection that we don't get in our feelings while we're also on the Facebook. Or anywhere else in our life where we see things we disagree with. Or we see offenses. We could be offended all day every day if we let the negativity get to us. And God, you are good, and you are good all the time. And all the time you are good. And if it's not good and godly, maybe we don't need it in our lives. And if it's of the world and it's not of you, enmity is created when we become friends of the world and the things therein. Father God, we just ask for your protection so that we may not become a friend of this world or anything in it that is not of the kingdom of heaven. And search first, seek you first the kingdom of heaven, and all those things will be added to us anyways. So let's just be patient and wait on you, Lord. And as long as it takes, we'll wrestle with you if you want to wrestle. We'll wrestle with our enemies if we need to wrestle. We'll wrestle with human beings if we need to wrestle. We'll wrestle with unclean spirits if we need to wrestle with them. God, this is your battle. This is your war. And we've already won it. So just tell us how we may serve you. Tell us how we may serve others. And as we serve others, we make you happy and we serve you. And God, it's only my desire to, to make you happy. And I know that everybody that's listening to this, that's made it 10, 11, 12 minutes into this, is going to understand. They're going to hear the Holy Spirit. They're going to feel it. And they're going to apply this knowledge and wisdom in their lives. And they're going to be better for it. And your blessings are coming abundantly, more than they've ever been poured out onto this earth in any point in time. And God, time has almost come to its end. This world has almost come to its end. And in the darkest hour, it's always darkest just before dawn. And in this watch, as we are night watchmen, God, you come in the midnight hour for your bride, and we are always looking for your return, constantly. In prayer and supplication, we just honor and serve you, and we worship your holy, holy name. Amen. Guys, be blessed. Have a great weekend, and just know that Jesus loves you, and so does Tim. And if we always have a friend in Jesus Christ, reach out to me anytime you need. Hit the Facebook button and be friends. Send me a comment on the bottom down there. Always make sure and check out if you have the option to look at the video description box. And I just love you guys unconditional. So I'll see you later.